Hey everybody, and welcome to the Crypto Masters Podcast, helping the general public master an understanding of crypto assets. My name is Brian McCoy. And my name is Ross Seaton. And we are the, the Crypto, Crypto Masters. Masters. The topic of today's episode is Terra. It's a payment network with its own algorithmically stabilized stablecoin and a lot more. Oh, yeah. At the time of this podcast, Terra and its Luna coin are on a tear. So a quick reminder. Ah. Yeah. Quick reminder to everybody <laughs> here. Our goal at the Crypto Masters is to provide information about crypto assets to help the public decide if it's something that they may want to invest in and then do further research on their own. We generally look at projects to determine if they would be good for a long-term investment. Yes, Brian, and we allow you, the listeners, to make your own investment decisions. Um, and I must say, we are not financial advisors, no. so obviously, this is not financial advice. But good call. I've got to say, we do the hard research for you, so you don't have to, but we do encourage you to do your, the research on your own to make your own we decisions. We help you get started. We help you. We're the catalyst to your crypto oh, nice. crypto uh, research uh, reaction, if you will. <laughs> but yeah, the Luna coin is rapidly moving up the market cap rankings. Even at the time we started typing up our script for yeah. this one it's moved up so yeah, yeah let's let's it's, find it's out it's on why. fire okay <clears throat> let's find so out there's why. a lot going on with this project so luna or um, terra it's a layer one blockchain that uses proof of stake its focus it seems to be a payment network with a stable coin ust not to be confused with usdt which is tether which is kind of the leader but you know much maligned so the project's native coin is called Luna, which is not a stable coin. And so it's the investable coin for the project. So, of course, more on Luna a bit later. But first, some background. Sure. So Terra started in South Korea as uh, Terraform Labs in 2018. It was formed in conjunction with some other Korean and Asian e-commerce sites. And so the mainnet launched in April of 2019. And it started with a stable coin pegged to the Korean won. That's its uh, currency in Korea. For sure. Uh, well, more about this later, but Mirror and Anchor were both created by Terra Labs and are on the Terra blockchain, Terra blockchain. And the success of these projects has created a lot of demand for the Terra stable coins, especially UST. So Terra, you remember this, Ross. Terra uses the Cosmos called Tendermint. I think we made fun of that. <laughs> the Tendermint proof there of stake. There was a gum joke. I, there. Yeah, there was. <laughs> the Tendermint proof of stake mechanism. So a little bit more on the proof of stake mechanism later. So remember I said it's an algorithmic stable coin. So this means that it's not backed by the currency to which it's pegged. So for example, like USDC or DAI, they're mainly uh, backed by U.S. dollar reserves or equivalents. Mm -hmm. um, instead, the uh, Luna, uh, the, I'm sorry, the UST stablecoin uses Luna to give incentives to keep the price with the peg. So to mint UST, an equivalent dollar amount of Luna must be burned. And there's been a lot of that going on lately. For sure. Oh, and, yeah. it, and then you can also mint Luna by burning the equivalent amount of UST. So it's an interesting incentive mechanism that uses arbitrageurs to keep the price of the stablecoin oh. at its peg. Yeah. I and wish we, I could tris, twist my mustache. <laughs> <that, laughs> arbitrageur. <right? laughs> All right. So supply and demand manipulation by the minting and the burning. We've seen this before with some other stablecoins, but it's really an interesting and different way you know, to back a stable coin other than just by holding the currency. Mm -hmm. Awesome, Brian. So uh, Terra's focus was originally on payment networks. Um, so Terra's payment network aims to be basically the PayPal of crypto. Big, big stamp and statement there, Brian. That is. Terra hopes to achieve this by creating stability and mass adoption. If you check out their white paper... 
that is a central theme. Like, how do we create stability in a token? Yeah. And how do we create mass adoption uh, for crypto? Um, so for the mass adoption, the platform has brought together a group of companies in into a, um, we'll call the alliance, known as the Terra Alliance, which whose goal is to promote the use of Terra's payment network in the e-commerce market. The alliance boasts several well-known players in the Asian e-commerce world, such as Timon, Carousel, and Pomelo. <laughs> <laughs> so, and just this is just a fun fact I had, but in 2019, the alliance had an estimate, estimated $25 billion in gross merchandise value, that's GMV, of course, and $25 million users. So big stuff going on. It's probably gone up by now. It's got to be up up there, especially if you've, you know, you'll probably go on CoinMarketCap or the CryptoMasters.com, Brian, to check out Luna's price movement. But this stuff (laughs) has been pumping since its start in 2019. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. So check out the CryptoMasters.com. But to continue on Terra, Brian, um, it's more than just a payment network. It also supports smart contracts may have heard of that before. I don't know. Kind of a buzzword <laughs> in crypto. Get with it if you haven't. But Terra Smart Contracts uses Cosm Wasm, the funnest word to say. That is nice. <laughs> the Cosm Wasm technology. A little bit like Mimble Wimble, but Cosm Wasm. Brian. Just throwing that out there. Sometimes when I'm having a bad day, I just kind of look in the mirror and say Cosm Wasm. Cosm Wasm. Cosm Wasm. Wasm. <laughs> <laughs> What's the thing in anger management, you know, that Adam Sandler says? Goose Frabe. Is that it? Something like that? Uh, something like that. That's the new... We need to make a new crypto anger management movie. I'm, I'm needing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cosm Wasm. Oh. It'll change your day. Oh, yeah, that did work. Didn't it? <laughs> You're welcome, America. And crypto world. The world. <laughs> the this world. Is, crypto is not limited to I'm America, sorry. Dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, we love our international uh, viewers, by the we way. We do, yeah. especially Terra. Um, huge in uh, South Korea. It is. But I digress, Brian. Uh, Big time. But the Cosm Wasm, <laughs> the Cosm Wasm piece for me is very intriguing. If you haven't seen our episode on Cosmos, please go check it out. Um you know, obviously, I'm not going to jump in too much of Cosmosm, but basically, Cosmos allows you to develop your own blockchain, mm-hmm. and Cosmosm is the plugin into the Cosm into the Cosmos SDK. Or, you know, if you're not a developer watching this channel, uh, SDK is Software Development Kit. Yeah, basically, a tool to help you plug into that piece of software. I remember that is a big part of the Cosmos project cool. for sure. Yeah. Um, so, what does this mean? This means if you are currently building a blockchain using the Cosmos SDK, you can easily add add a Cosm Wasm smart contract to your chain by adjusting, um, by not adjusting a lot. So this was a no brainer for Terra team to use it, as it gives you tons of tooling to easily build smart contracts out of the box and connect up to a chain, to your chain on Cosmos and uh, in turn other chains on Cosmos. As we know, Cosmos is the let's say universe of blockchains, hub. you know, but uh, yeah, hub. I, I mean, whatever's connected on cosmos, you can easily <laughs> interconnect with. And this is just a, uh, this is kind of reading straight from the websites, but here are a few aspects about Cosm Wasm for any developers that might be listening. So if you're a developer using Cosm Wasm, you can build contracts in rust, go or assembly script run on multiple chains connected by the cosmos IBC and the Cosmos IBC is basically a protocol within Cosmos that allows chains to communicate with each other. Uh, developer Developers can also use Terra stablecoins, on-chain swaps, layer one oracles, uh, stuff like that. Ex- and you can also expose dApps, uh, dApp user bases to Terra's payment services in a permissionless fashion. So big stuff, big stuff there, Brian, if you're using Cosmosm. But let me also add that there is at least some interoperability between Terra and other major blockchains, um, obviously, such as Cosmos, um, but also Polkadot and Solana. And the website says they're adding even more. So, you know, I believe I'm there. And one last thing there, Brian, one last thing. I know I've been rambling, but (laughs) Terra is above Cosmos in market cap and has been for some time. 
Uh, given the nature of what Terra does, it makes sense from a financial standpoint, I'd say. But man, I'm just kind of surprised that it's so much higher than Terra. I'm, I know we don't like to date. You mean podcasts. Cosmos? What did I just say? Terra. Terra. Man. <laughs> uh, so I'm surprised to see Terra so right. much, Cosmos so much lower than Terra. Um, but hey, people, don't sleep on Cosmos. I mean, no. Well, don't sleep on them. Yeah, and that's and maybe we'll get to this later, but. You know, it, Terra sort of started out with this really cool uh, stablecoin idea and went from that and then, you know, maybe just got the uh, the Cosmos um, open source, you know, for its uh, smart chains and decided to use that. Um, maybe me and you should do that. I mean, it, I mean, uh, uh, Crypto Masters coin. Uh, masters token whatever it's anyway. not a matter of if brian it's, it's a matter yeah, of when I, I agree with that stay right. tuned people maybe anyway, five years <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's talk about a couple of projects that terra has built on its blockchain that i really think we need to mention so first is mirror protocol you know i saw this when it first came out i thought like oh i need i need to invest in this because i have invested in synthetics <clears throat> for sure so mirror protocol allows the creation of fungible assets, synthetics, that track the real, the price of real world assets. So mirror synthetics are intended to be used as key building blocks in smart contracts and bring the world's assets to blockchain. So for example here, stocks such as Apple, Google, Tesla, Twitter, Netflix, Microsoft, Amazon, Alibaba, and commodities such as iShares Gold Trust and iShares Silver Trust can all be on the mirror <clears throat> protocol. I know some of those words. Yeah. So <laughs> to mint a mirror asset, which is an M asset, an issuer must lock up 150% of the current asset value in Terra stable coins or M assets as collateral. And if the value of the asset rises above collateralization threshold, the collateral is liquidated to guarantee the solvency of the system. You see this in a, lot, in a lot of the similar projects. So, you know, if you're going to use a kind of a synthetics, you got to have a um, multiple of the value or else if, if the price goes down, you can be liquidated. For sure. So the mirror token, which is the mirror protocol token, that's now in the top 200 of a market cap. So it's very successful. Let me just note this though. I, I like mirror. I love mirror. Like I said, I, I've invested in synthetics, but similar projects have run into some regulatory problem concerns recently. In July of 2021, Binance dropped its stocks tokens, which was like the Binance equivalent of Apple or Tesla. Um, they got like a uh, regulatory pressure and dropped it. Yeah. It was for me. It felt like as soon as I was there, it, it was, was close. Gone. It wasn't it was like, long. What? It was a few weeks. Yeah. I was like, wait, where'd that cool thing go? Yeah. But and then in yeah. July, Uniswap did kind of the same thing. They halted the fake stop, fake stock tokens again because of regulatory scrutiny. So that's just something to be aware of. All right. So let's talk about the other one. So first protocol that's really driving some demand on um, Terra is uh, Mirror. The second one is Anchor. I really, I really like this concept, my, Ross. I'm a, I'm a little bit older than you, a few years. So we know that yields that you can get from providing liquidity or yield farming are variable. We've done, we both done it. Oh yeah. We both jumped in. You jump in at it's 900%, you know, APY. This is awesome, you know, and then some more people jump in and suddenly it's down to hundred which is still pretty awesome that, anyway those were the exact numbers of my situation right right but anyway <laughs> but yeah, that's what yeah. happens but you know it's very yeah. variable you start out yeah. at 900 yeah. it comes down to 100 maybe it goes down to 50 it goes down to 20 it goes down to you know nine nine now we're regular numbers yeah anyway so they're variable so you they start out high like we said but then you know as more people get involved the yields come down or if they're based on fees, like you see with some of the liquidity providing, um, that varies based on volume, right? Mm -hmm. You just swap volume is, is way up, you're getting more fees, you just swap volume goes down, you're not getting as much. So, but 
you know, we have these proof of stake coins and those very, those yields are usually pretty stable. So like Terra itself is pretty low. I think it's about one and a half percent. Yeah. But you get something like Cardano, which is a very, very decentralized um, proof of stake. It's about five and a half percent. Tezos may even be a bit higher. So you, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have these other yeah. like proof of stake where it's more stable. So what Anchor does is it compiles a diversified stream of these staking rewards from different major proof of stake blockchains, and it allows the users to earn a low variable yields on the Terra stablecoin deposits. So Ross, this is huge. So for people who are used to, and I don't want to say retirement, but you know, who want more of a steady income from their investments, it's a little bit like used to in the old days, probably before your time, we had these yeah. things called money market funds where you could put it in a money market and you might get 5% or 4%. Now it's like 0.04%. It's nothing. Yeah. Uh-huh. But anyway, we used to be able to do that. And so now for Anchor to do this, this is a great concept and literally it could be huge. I'm just telling you. So I, I got to say, honestly, we haven't done our extensive research on either Mirror or Anchor, but each could be its own podcast, right? Each of them, uh, we could delve deeply into them and do a podcast, but so. Oh yeah, there's a lot going on there. Right, it's, but it's for huge, purposes yeah. of Terra, these projects are on its blockchain, but more importantly, they drive demand for UST, which is a stable coin. And like I said before, Demand for UST goes up. What happens? Loon is burned. What happens when it's burned? Supply goes down. Price goes up. So for sure. Yeah. Right. So this contributes to the the Luna price increases, and this is what's been driving the yeah the increase in the Luna prices lately. And to be honest, this is a point I'd say for a beginner that it um almost will become overwhelming. You know, you have. Terra running on top of Cosmos, and then you have Terra running these applications. That, I mean, this one is pretty. There's and a lot of layers to this and then it's, nice case. It's you UST, um, you know, stablecoin that that goes with supply and demand with the Terra. Yeah. So yeah, it's there's a lot to it. There's a lot of there's a lot going there's a lot on going on. This, yeah, in this <laughs> let's say universe. I like it. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so as we mentioned, uh, Terra uses proof of stake to the secure the network, but let's get into a bit more detail here, Brian. Get your notepad out. But Terra is based on Tendermint. I was waiting on a gum yeah, joke, but yeah, it didn't come. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, we did that. We did it already. We did it before. Uh, but, still laughing about it. So. Uh, still comically uh, awesome. <laughs> still comically humorous. Yes, but. Uh, uh, Tendermint, which relies on a set of validators that are responsible for committing new blocks in the blockchain. Validator candidates can bond their own Luna and have Luna delegated or staked to them by token holders. The Columbus mainnet currently has 130 validators, but over time this will increase to about 30 validators according to right, the predefined you, schedule. 30? You mean 300? Man, I can't. So it's, it's at 130. And you're saying it could be up to 300. I cannot talk right now, Brian. <laughs> 300. So, yeah. So, we'll, from 130, it's at 130 now, and it could go to 300. It's, yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, but, yeah, this is according to their predefined schedule. Uh, the validators are determined by who has the most staked delegated to them, obviously, as we've seen in other networks. Um, but the top 130 validator candidates with the most stake will become Terra validators. Validators and their delegators earn various fees and incentives from the protocol. In addition, these um, there there's strikes for misbehaviors, obviously. Uh, but if validators double sign, for example, are frequently offline or do not participate in governance, their staked Luna including Luna of users that delegated to them can be slashed. So big penalties there, Brian, big right. risk. Yeah, yeah. The, the penalties depend on the uh, severity of the validate or the violation rather this classic trade-off. Um, this is a classic trade-off, Brian. This is less it decentralization, is. <laughs> but lower fees 
faster transaction times. So how many yeah. times have we talked? Right. This I is, mean, all these other projects, right? If you decentralize by having fewer validators, like if we've seen EOS, I think was like 30. Yeah, way lower. Yeah. I think, um, you know, Cosmos and maybe even Polkadot is like 100. Yeah. And this, we said, is 130. So, right? you know, you compare that to other chains like, you know, Cardano, which has I don't, thousands and thousands. Yeah. It's the trade-off. I mean, of course, then, and then with Bitcoin, you know, you have the, um, you know, much longer uh, block times. Yeah. But that's the trade-off. That is the trade-off. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I got to say, between the proof of stake, um, more centralized, you know, systems we've seen, this is one of the larger it is. sets of Right, validators. 130 is more than we've seen with 30 or 100. Yeah. Which which I I'm, I personally am okay with. You're yeah, okay that, with that, 130. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think that's, that's, that's up there, you know. That's it, kind of like, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, it, when it gets lower and when it's under 100 or, you know, especially EOS and 30s, yeah. it's like... Uh, that's, I don't know. It kind of, right. it's moving so far away from the central, uh, theme of Bitcoin and crypto yeah. that it kind of is, puts a bad taste in my mouth, even though it's a good product, yeah. but so, I digress. Yeah. I digress. Okay. okay. No, yeah. no, yeah. Right. that's, that's a good point to discuss. All right. So let's talk about tokenomics, which we always do. The tokenomics king right here, people. I can see the tokenomics guy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, but in a nutshell for Terra, it's complicated. <laughs> oh, complicated because you know it's not like the normal you know there's this much max supply there's this much outstanding and so we you know we have this percentage left to go you can't do that with this because as we said said luna is minted and burned depending on the demand for its stable coins so all you're going to invest in with terra is the luna right i mean you know ust is just a stable coin yeah so with the Luna being burned and minted, it's hard to say, you know, there's this percentage of the total max because you just can't do it because you don't know what's going to be burned. Um, yeah, with this algorithmic, algorithmic, algorithmic approach. Yes, yeah. so, so it's constantly, <laughs> it's, it's constantly it's, changing, yeah. right? So for what it's worth, I'll just say, you know, that the maximum is around right, uh, right around a billion, and the current circulating supply is just over four hundred million, but. Again, take that with a grain of salt because there's always burning and minting. So, for sure. Yeah, with this type of uh, project, the actual numbers like that don't mean as much. So, as, but as far as the initial distribution or the launch, there were two private sales in 2019. And these were not avail available to retail investors, but instead they were sold to large exchanges like Binance and then several venture, ca venture capital firms. So we've heard this before. But here's kind of the numbers. About 26% was sold during these private sales. About 30% then went to Terraform Labs and some other insiders. And then about 20% to the Terra Alliance, you know, which is used to kind of promote the, uh, the ecosystem. And that's made up of 16 cooperating firms in the case of Terra Alliance, or it was at that time. So that's about 76% to some form of insiders, you know, I would say. But so the remaining 24%, 20% went to stability, you know, the stability reserves, which they need to run the protocol. So that leaves 4% that went to exchanges to be purchased by little plebs but like me and you to the retail to the retail <laughs> investors four yeah. percent so this was not what you call a fair launch i mean it just wasn't yeah but i gotta say you know despite this you know the price performance has been impressive i mean the private sales were prices from 16 cents to 80 cents per coin and as of the date of this recording of this podcast the current price is around 28.50 or 30 dollars <clears throat> this that's nice that's insane yeah. yeah so if you got in early you certainly had some fantastic returns but the returns were great and even if you got in early on the you know one of the few you know out of the four percent that was there on the uh exchanges you did great you know no doubt but you know the tokenomics really are not very good that's just to be frank okay right on brian well 
you've got to be asking yourself at this point, where can plebes like us <laughs> buy Luna? And it's on Binance, KuCoin, OKX, and Huobi Global. But it reached the top 16 in market cap, and it's not on any exchanges in the U.S. Where can citizens. I buy it? Yeah, unless you're, you know, doing the VPN magic, which, you know, has might be coming to an end on Binance. Um, but yeah, yeah it's, it's an interesting note. So it's got that. It's, it's amazing it's in the top 16, and essentially U.S. citizens can't buy it. That's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty tricky, and I, I, I just, I don't know. I'm just curious what's going on with that. I don't, I don't get it. I, well, I mean, I think it's the UST demand, but yeah, yeah, for well, sure. More on final thoughts. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I'm seeing a foreshadow there, Brian. Yeah. And we always like to mention the team behind Terra, and that is Terraform Labs. This is a legit major player in South Korea. Terraform Labs was formed by Daniel Shin and Do Kwan. And without getting into details, these are impressive guys, and the team behind Terra is very solid. I've I watched a podcast on Do Kwan, a couple of them. Yeah. And just a very knowledgeable, very yeah. down to earth guy. I really like hearing him speak. Yep, yeah, me too. Very I, cool yeah, guy. Do Kwan seems pretty impressive. So no question the team is there. All right, Ross, you know what? It's time for final thoughts. Say it, say it just one more time, Brian. Final thoughts. I love it. I just love it so much. I don't know why. <laughs> you know what, Ross? I went first last week, so you're up this week. Me? Go. Okay. It's my go time, time. My time to shine. Uh, I okay. I think this is a solid team, solid project, and it uses the ever-powerful ever Cosmos, which I must say, Brian, is one of my favorite projects. Yeah, I like it. And what what's our anger management word? I don't. <laughs> Cosm was. Cosm was. Oh my God, that is relaxing. And, you know, I, this project, I love the mission behind it. Mass adoption, how do we get that? That's the driving force of this. I love it. And I don't typically like projects that are more centralized in nature, but again, this is one has more validators than some of the other projects we've seen. And, you know, that's just, that's just a trade off. And at least currently, if you know, you get get those lower transaction times and speeds yeah transaction costs you know yeah. so that's we just didn't really mention that but that is a very good point that's that's yeah. that's the benefit of the trade-off yeah and for sure before i make my next point um or let's say more of a statement i just want to say i i recognize the challenges that come to you know stable coins and this is not an easy problem but i must admit stable coin projects just don't very much excite me, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I hate to say it. It's just like, I don't know. And I, I recognize the struggle. I know it's a hard game, especially burning and, you know, moving their Luna token around is tough. Um, and, you know, I do like it from the sense that stable coins typically get the highest yield on DeFi platforms, which is probably where I'll use, you know, move yeah. my tokens that hopefully timing out this bull run. Which I but, always you know, thought was curious, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it is a very curious thing. Yeah. Um, so if I were to take profits, you know, I'm going to park it at my earnings and um, some liquidity pool for one of Terra's stable coins. But stable coins to me just aren't that exciting. I hate to say it. And But my final thought is that I believe Terra Coins Luna will do well. And obviously that's true. I mean, what did you say, Brian? The start was $0.16 cents and now it's at $30. Yeah. I, I, it may not be. It may not be more. It's probably going up since we started talking about it on this podcast. We but, can check. I think it's around that. Yeah. But the run up is insane. Yeah. Um, it, it it's just wild. But I've got to say, expanding on this, even though I'm not a big fan of stable coins, what Terra has running on it. I mean, we didn't even talk about Chai, the payment system yeah. they they use in South Korea. That's it's a good point. It's yeah. still low adoption in South Korea right now. I think I saw some figure. It's at five percent utilization in south korea for payments and stuff like that but the the platforms running on terra you know you've got mirror you've got chai you've got um anchor anchor i mean the platforms running on this bad boy are sick yeah sick and which line. which drives demand for the stable coin yeah and I, which I, in this case increases the price increases of, of luna, the luna. Yeah, yeah if they're if they're burning the supply i mean yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. So I my final thought is Luna good, Cosmos 
still one of my favorites. Right nice. There. So, All right. Yeah. So take it away, Brian. As again, you know, you sort of stole my thunder like I do when I go first. Uh, yes. But I really like the stable coin. I mean, I, I think the UST stable coin. I, I like US. Um, I like USDC as well. But, uh -huh. um, you know, everybody has a little bit of concerns about Tether. I, I don't have as many concerns as most people, but I prefer USDC. But I also UST is up there. So I really like a stable coin and I like the projects that are on this blockchain, especially anchor, you know, from what I know, we haven't done, done the deep dives yet, but for sure. Yeah. I like the concept of anchor. That's like, yeah, that's something we need in the crypto space is a stable, um, return, right? Yeah. Because that, I mean, you think about what we're, what's in the existing fiat world. That's what people look for. Some people, they, I want a stable return. I want to know what it's going to be. And in, in the crypto world right now, we, we have a variable uh, yield, which is so much better than what you can get in the fiat world, but it's still, it's variable. So yeah. you've got the uncertainty of that. Let's get a stable one. Boom. Anchor. Love it. So what are my concerns with Terra? Well, there's been a really huge price run up. So, I mean, that's not a reason not to buy, but it is a factor in my mind. Yeah, especially um, at the time of this podcast, for sure. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. had such a run up. You're thinking, well, maybe, you know, maybe it's it's maybe it's had its moment. Um, and, and then you add to that that it's not so great tokenomics. I mean, the, the, the pre-launch really was not good by standards of, of other and I would say, you know, best case um, projects, but. You know, so so where I am now on this is really in, in a wait and watch mode. One other thing is the competition in this space is fierce. I mean, to the extent, and, and I'm not really sure. Its emphasis was payments and this pretty cool stable coin, UST yeah. and US, or, or, I'm sorry, and then the Korean won and what other other fiat fiat they're pegged to. But it started out with that, but now, you know, it's it's also expanded into smart contracts. And that is fierce competition. I mean, we have Cardano pumping because it's going smart contact soon. Solana yeah. is pumping. ETH2 is right around the corner. Polkadot, Cosmos, Elrond. I mean, this is just some fierce competition. Yeah, there's no limit. And there's guys entering oh, all the time. Yeah. Which is great for the crypto world. But for any one particular project, you got to be like, I'm not sure. So I'm going to watch this for Terra for a price drop. And really, don't get mad at me, but this is really just because of the price pump that it's had. Yeah. Up to this point, I'm not traditionally buying things that have had recent pumps. I like a little more value. But, you know, this is... It's guesswork, so I will admit that. Um, yeah, could it, double tomorrow. It yeah, could, and I, and I realize, space, you know, with yeah. this approach, I, I might, you know, I might miss out. So, but you can't get everything. So, let me say, I really like this project. I really like the tech. I love the uh, stablecoin UST, which I think is going to continue to go. I have more demand, which means more burning of Luna. I wish that, you know, the initial the initial launch and the tokenomics had been more fair. But you know what? People have made a lot of money on Luna, and they may continue to do so. I think it's a great project, and I'm keeping my eye on it. I like it. That's like my that. final thoughts. That is your final thought. I Let's like go that. with it. We are running a little, a little overboard Ooh. tonight. But you know what? Wow. Terra is a cool project, and it deserved it. So that's no problem. There. Yeah, it, it definitely deserves the time, Brian. You know I what, though, Ross? We'll be back next week with another interesting crypto project because it's uh never ending interesting <laughs> in pretty much space. that is I correct mean, for sure we got a lot of stuff to work with for sure and uh i'll say hey guys check out our website our social media like and subscribe if you really enjoyed this video leave us a comment if you know you didn't like what we did or you like what we did and you want to add to the discussion below but hey awesome tune in the crypto masters.com thecryptomasters.com that's our website we're working on it it's it's constantly improving but we think it's pretty good yeah you're we'll say it's your one-stop shop soon to be for all your crypto masters crypto content needs all right so check it out thanks everybody we'll see you next week